Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, August 11th. It's time to go on the record. Holyoke Mayor Alex Morris, young, ambitious, and now running against a Capitol Hill power broker, Congressman Richard Neal. Another hang-up on hands-free. Why the disconnect on Beacon Hill on this legislation getting passed? And Tom Brady's house is on the market. Could he be looking beyond sports to politics? Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Very good morning to you, everyone, and welcome to OTR this morning. We have nearly reached the. Can you believe we're already halfway through August? I don't even want to talk about it. I know, about I don't want to really think about it. How is that possible? We don't know. But our guest this morning is Mayor Alex Morse of Holyoke, who is now embarking on a race for Congress. He is a Democrat. He took office as Holyoke's youngest mayor back in 2012 at the age of 22. He is also the city's first openly gay chief executive. Mayor Morse is a graduate of Brown University, lectures on political science at UMass Amherst. It's great to have you with us this morning, sir. Good to great, see you. Thanks for having us. And you still look like you're 22 And you still look like you're 22. I don't feel it. You still look like you're 22. Okay, you've been mayor of Holyoke for nearly eight years now, but your st city, unfortunately, is still at the bottom of the Massachusetts list economically and academically. Why do you think you can do better representing the entire congressional district um, than longtime congressman, con Congressman Richard mm. Neal? Yeah, well, thanks again for having me. And I ran for mayor eight years ago in Holyoke as someone that was born and raised there and went through the public schools because I felt like people had just quietly given up on Holyoke and resigned themselves to the fact that our best days uh, were behind us. And so after graduating from college, in instead of going to a big city yeah. or going on a grad school, I wanted to come back to my hometown. There were people in places that felt left behind, forgotten about, neighborhoods that hadn't seen investment, and people lost faith that local government could be a force for good in their lives. And that's the same reason I'm running for Congress, because all of the communities, the 87 cities and towns, people are feeling uh, left out, left behind, forgotten about. And I think the progress and the work we've done over the last eight years in education, economic development, public health, uh, increasing civic engagement and a healthy democracy really serves as a roadmap for the first congressional district. Let's talk about, for example, the high school dropout rate. It was pretty bad when you took over. Has that improved since you've taken office and by how much? Yeah, when I took office, only 49% of our city's young people were graduating from high school. And today, over 72% of our students are graduating from high school. In the and eight you, years you've been mayor? In the eight years, since, right. since 2012. And you still have the same number of students. It's not as if the uh, number of students has gone down. Is that fair yeah, to say? Yeah, same number of students. And what's happening now is we've worked really hard to to make the public schools the number one uh, school of choice. And so not only has the graduation rate increased, we've gotten closer to our goal of universal pre-K. Uh, we've implemented a dual language program uh, where our students are learning English and Spanish starting in preschool, which is an incredibly powerful, uh, popular uh, program in the district. And we've also reimagined the high school experience. Uh, we have students for the first time in high school taking classes at our community college in UMass and Westfield State, making sure that when our young people do graduate, they don't just get a diploma, they get it college credits, a uh, seal of biliteracy, or a workplace uh, readiness certificate. So, so, so that's that's a good setup for for the city of Holyoke here. But mm -hmm. let's talk about the first district. Let's talk about Richard Neal. He's he's the House Ways and Means Chairman. It's a <clears> very <throat> powerful position, mm -hmm. second most powerful position in the U.S. House. Are you willing to sacrifice the money, the influence that Massachusetts would lose if you replaced him? Yeah, and this is the fundamental question of of this campaign. There's no question that Congressman Neal has power and has seniority. Uh, but the fundamental question is, how is that power being used and who is it being used for? And I want to go to Washington uh, to fight for each and every person that live in the first congressional district. And when he does wield power, uh, it's not for the people in places uh, in Western Mass. And I think people have, again, lost faith in federal government that it can be a powerful force for good uh, in their life. And I want to go to Washington not to uh, be beholden to corporate donors and special interests. Uh, my biggest special interest, obviously, will always be the people of the first district. Well, give me one example, one concrete example of where he has not fought for the people in the district but has fought for powerful interests. Can you give me one? Yeah, I think when you think about, we have a member of Congress that continues to, to advocate for the status quo when it comes to our failed uh, health insurance system. We have people dying in Western Mass from lack of access to health insurance, to being underinsured from the opioid uh, epidemic, uh, and then his hesitance to embrace a Medicare for All system that puts people in their health and communities uh, before uh, big pharma and their profits. And so I want to go to Congress to fight not for uh, the corporations that that invest vast amounts of money into the campaign, but to fight for actual people in places and communities. We have hospitals and schools closing in the rural parts of the district and the Berkshires and the hill towns. Uh, and so you would never know that we had one of the most powerful Democrats representing us when you look at outcomes in health and education, when you look at the opioid uh, epidemic. And so again, power for who and power for what? And besides health insurance, anything else? I mean, besides health care, is there another example where he has not fought for the people? 
Again, he's the only uh, member of the delegation uh, that isn't signed on to the Green New Deal. We've seen the impact of climate disasters on the city of Holyoke after Hurricane Maria uh, in Puerto Rico. We need bold action to fight climate change. Uh, we're getting closer to being a carbon neutral community uh, in Holyoke. Uh, and again, we have a member of Congress that doesn't recognize this crisis for uh, what it is. And so on a whole host of issues, uh, I want to be a leader uh, in the district. And, and uh, let me let me take it a step further. I mean, was your inspiration run based on the success of, I mean, you know, uh, now Congress Woman Ayanna Presley defeated a long time incumbent mm -hmm. in Congress, Mike Capuano, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. She has a seat in the House. You, you got an endorsement from the Progressive Justice Democrats like they did. Is this a key to fundraising for you? Well, I, this campaign is rooted in, in Western Mass, right? So I, I, again, as mayor of Holyoke, we've made a lot of progress, but we can really only move the needle so much in places like Holyoke that are traditionally forgotten about and not giving their a fair share. And so I want to be part of conversations that actually change the game for communities uh, mm -hmm. like ours. And Western Mass oftentimes is is left behind. And yes, I've been inspired by a more uh, a younger, more progressive class of Democrats that have taken on uh, entrenched members of the Who've establishment. Who've been successful as um, they've done it. And too. there's this argument that you have to be in Washington for 20 or 30 years to have influence or set the agenda. And I would argue it's the, uh, the newer member of, members of Congress, like Congresswoman uh, Presley, uh, in just eight months uh, has become a leader in Washington, helping uh, lead the fight to hold this president accountable, to set the agenda, to advocate for progressive policies. So you don't need to be there 20 or 30 years to have that influence. I know some people that work for her are also helping you out, but have you had a chance to have a chat with Ayanna Presley at all? Not directly about this campaign. I had the chance to say hi to her in her office in, in January when I was in Washington. Okay, so here's the big question. Um, do you think that Democrats and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi are handling the president the right way right now? Do you think they are addressing the issue the correct way? What would you be doing if you were there? I think members of Congress have a constitutional duty to hold this president accountable and do everything they can to do that. And I think, again, party leadership and our congressman uh, is, is part of that, is are more concerned about political polling and the next election rather than our principles and our values. And, and that includes opening up impeachment proceedings. I, 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 I frankly don't understand the slow walking to open up proceedings. It's so frankly would, the you only- would open up, You would endorse opening up, that you would want it to go forward right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, I, I would join with a near majority of the Democratic caucus in the House of Representatives to open Should up- Should she wait until she does have a majority number before she actually proceeds? Well, no, because what happens is people, people frankly, listen to uh, Speaker Pelosi before they listen to their constituents. And so when I go to D.C., I will not wait for a call from Nancy Pelosi. I will wait for a call from my constituents and be in conversation and community with them. And I think people are looking for her uh, and leaders like Congressman Neal for leadership uh, that just isn't there. And so, again, this is about principles and about values. If Donald Trump doesn't merit opening up impeachment proceedings, which is frankly the only way the American people can see the truth uh, and get the information uh, that we don't have, is to have these hearings and, and to have these meetings. And again, if he doesn't merit impeachment proceedings, I don't know what president will ever in our lifetime. You ready for the OTR pop quiz? As ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> was, was that quiet confidence? I, I think it's, it sounded pretty confident. <laughs> pretty confident. All right, here we go. The pop quiz, some trivia about the 413. The sport of volleyball was invented in your city. It's the home of the Volleyball Hall of Fame. It was not originally called volleyball. What was it first called? Was it hand mitten, rally ball, or mittenette? It wasn't originally called volleyball. Which one was it, A, B, or C? It was C. It was C. Mittenet developed did you know by that or did winter you guess? of 1895. I guessed. Oh, you did. I didn't know okay. that. You did? Maybe. Okay. Uh, okay. An honest politician. <laughs> <Very> okay. <laughs> the highest point in Massachusetts is in the first congressional district. What mountain holds that distinction? We have multiple choice on the screen. Is it Spruce? Is it Mount Greylock? Or is it Jiminy Peak? It is A, B, or C? Mount Greylock. It is Mount Greylock, 3,489 feet located in the town of Adams. <laughs> He's two for two. Is he a confident two for, doesn't matter. He's two for two. We're taking a break. We're right back with the mayor of Holyoke. You still have two more. Yeah.